I hope you can hear me. Generally, when you speak after Bob pulling over, I'm a bit shorter. I'm going to be hitting the mic. Generally, when you speak uh, after Bob pulling over, uh, very little remains unsaid. Uh, having said that, I'm going to definitely try and uh, give you more of a ground level perspective in terms of what we're doing as a group, what I'm doing personally, uh, to try and familiarize you more with the Kennedy staff about. I'd like to start by thanking the Suncorp team, the Dean of Strathmore, the Strathmore team. Thank you very much for hosting us today. It's a fantastic event. Now, most of you would have been to the bathroom this morning. I'm sure you've interacted with either toilet tissue or a tissue product. Why this bizarre statement? Our core business is tissue products manufacturing and distribution. A little bit was already said about our group, but just to elaborate a little bit more. Um, we have operations, like I mentioned, tissue paper and hygiene product manufacturing. We're also into real estate, mining, solar energy generation, uh, Mobius Motors, automobile manufacturing. Uh, we have a footprint in Kenya, Tanzania, Uganda, India, and Dubai currently. I want to be as brief as possible so I can make the session as interactive as possible. I, I, I prefer to take uh, more questions and, and, and answer any queries you may have. Today, in our lives as CEOs, as business owners, as entrepreneurs, we tend to focus a lot on the economic and commercial gains across you know, the sectors we operate in. But sometimes, we, we tend to forget, or it's at least at the back of our minds, the, the social element, the, the, the impact we're having actually on transforming lives. And I think it's these kind of very unique forums that bring this out. So I think we're very lucky to be here, and I'm, I'm, I'm honestly honored to speak today. Bob talked about it. Africa. We all know, you know, has got the lowest GDP you know, uh, of all continents globally. It is the most underdeveloped economy. But exactly this is the potential. The, there, there are certain challenges of doing business here, but because of these risks, because the terrain is, uh, you know, at times unpredictable, the, the commercial element really outweighs any risks from our perspective. For those who know our group. We are one of the most diversified private owned, privately owned groups across East Africa. Why have we positioned ourselves like this? One may ask, from tissue to, to cars and mining. Uh, we've actually sat down and, and, and carved out a strategy to position ourselves in those sectors we feel are going to have the, the potential growth over the next or medium term at, at, at an amazing rate. Apart from this, we've also earmarked those sectors where we really feel we're going to be able to transform lives across East Africa. Where we'll really be able to add value and increase the living standards of East African citizens. I often get asked uh, this question, what is it like to be a group CEO of, of, of such a large uh, business at, at, at such an early age? I mean, the last night was no exception. Uh, I, was, I was on Jeff Gordambi's uh, show. Uh, and by the way, I just got promoted last week, so I'm very new to this role. Um, it's, it's, it's interesting. The, the one thing I'd like to say to all the entrepreneurs in the room, my, my, my fellow age mates, not to say that he's too old, by the way, don't forget to promise um, is you've got to really have a goal and a vision as to where you want to get, get to. You really need to be clear on, on, on where you want to be. After that, you, you need to have a very clear journey as to how you're going to do it. Once you prepare yourself and you stay committed to doing it, I really believe nothing is impossible. I want to talk a little bit about uh, two of our businesses um, and, and, and two of the sectors uh, that, 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 that we are very we strongly believe in and, and what social impact we've created through these sectors. Uh, I talk about Chandari Industries, that's our flagship company through which we manufacture our tissue paper and hygiene products. Even though we've built this business uh, to where it is today, um, there, there are certain elements which we continue to maintain and will continue to do so in the future for social reasons. I want to just talk you through these. We are also the largest waste paper recyclers in East and Central Africa. Over the last 50 years of our operations, we have saved 50 million trees. And in the next five years, we're hoping to save another 10 million. Where does this waste paper come from? Takes me to my next point. When we started this business uh, approximately 50 years ago, my, my, my grandfather took a very strong step and helped a lady set up a waste paper collection business. He bought her a warehouse and two vehicles. Today, 
that business is the largest waste paper collector and distributor across the region and continues to remain. We could have easily set up a division to collect our raw material, but we don't. We outsource this function because we understand it creates employment to over 20,000 individuals in the waste paper collection and distribution sector, which is in effect is helping lift people out of poverty in the informal sector. Something else we do in one of our packaging processes. We employ hundreds of single moms and widows. We could easily automate this process by, by bringing in some machinery. But again, we want, to, we, want, we want to be true to our principle of creating employment and, and lifting people out of poverty. Mobius, for those who, who understand the, 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 the Kenyan uh, business place and have been following the Kenyan media, this business has had a lot of attraction. It is true that we are one of the lead investors in this project. Just to give you a little bit of a synopsis of what Mobius does. We, we, we will produce the most affordable brand new car in Kenya. So this is the first time anything like this has, has been appointed, has, has actually been attempted, and we are, we are very, very, and we, we really are looking forward to creating something that's going to revolutionize the transportation industry. Although very ambitious, I, I really think we have, we have something good going. Finally, I would just like to finish with a quote that I live my, live my life by. And it goes like this. Success is not a destination. It's a continuous journey. The question is, what is the journey for you? Thank you very much.
I'm very passionate about doing whatever, whatever I can, the little bit I can, to sharing, you know, my initial experience, sharing what, what, what skills I feel are important. Uh, we, well, just one more thing about uh, study away from home is we, we actually have a, a, a sort of affiliation with Stanford, where every year we actually get two interns from the MBA class, and they spend a minimum of two months with us every year. Uh, we, we also have we also have similar arrangements with local universities, but I think it just needs to be structured a little better. But this is something that I'm really looking forward to doing more in my time more. My name is Mwai. I chair a company called Namokamita Chama Limited, which is organizing groups, investment groups, to invest together. Congratulations on your appointment. Thank you. One simple question in the spirit of sharing that we are discussing this morning. When are you due to share in the share capital with Kenyans? <laughs> so I presume you're talking about the last Yes. Okay. Um, that's, that's a very interesting uh, question. Uh, we, we, we get this asked a lot. There are a lot of forums where people ask, why aren't you listing? Uh, you know, you're, you're larger now than the uh, majority of the companies on the Nairobi Stock Exchange. I think when we look at this internally, when you look at from our perspective, the, the, the key reasons for listing, one is um, the requirement for finance. Uh, the second thing is you know, potentially the, the publicity and the brand building that comes with it. Um, in, in, in short, and then there's obviously various tax incentives, etc. We haven't really seen um, the need for ourselves internally yet to, to, to go that route. Um, we, we have a long-term strategy, which sometimes also doesn't match with uh, what, uh, what, what, what the shareholders or what, what the wider public <coughs> expects from, from this listed company. I think most of the, the, the targets there are a lot more short-term. Uh, we, that's one, one major issue or, or concern we have, is that we, we may not be able to, to, to plan as long term as we currently do. Uh, but it's definitely something that, 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 that may be on the cards in time to come. And maybe you can share your card I might, I, might, I might pull you first when we do that. <laughs> Hi, this is Suzanne Eagle, and um, I have a question. Your story is so inspiring about how you're supporting social entrepreneurs and women and girls, and do you write, as a company, a social impact report on an annual basis, and do you speak to other corporates, your peers, about the kinds of things that you're doing? Because it feels like you could help us, as a community, to engage so much other corporates to get involved in what we're doing, and for us to demonstrate how much we can help companies like yours. Um. We actually, we, we, we don't really publish um, a social impact report per se, uh, but a lot, of, a lot of our audited reports, a lot of our internal documentation that, that, that we do make public, uh, covers very subtly the activities we're involved in. Just, just I mean, I, I really don't like um, shouting out about what we're doing socially, but just to give you one idea, just, just to give you one example, because I personally support about 35 institutions around the country. Uh, uh, they're a mix of educational and healthcare because I think these are the true necessities any individual needs to, to have a starting block for their own life. Uh, so we, we, we're sharing more at forums when, when I or I can speak. We're, we're sharing a little bit on social media about what we're doing. In terms of engaging other corporates, um, definitely. Uh, I, I wish you know, Bob was here. We're actually uh, in discussion with them as well to, to try and roll something out through their digital platform. Um, it's just that we really don't like pushing it out there too much. Um, and in terms of our peers, absolutely. We try, and, we try and take along as many industries as we can, in, 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 in as many initiatives as we, we try and sort of come up with. But, but you're right, I think there, there is a bit of a need to structure it a little bit better so it, you know, it has a trickling effect uh, across the economy. We have time only for one last question. Okay. There is a question. Well, I, I guess I'm glad to be the last question. My name is Joshua from uh, Embark Energy. Um, I wanted to ask you, you, uh, you indicated that you, you have, uh, you're skewed towards um, referring to, to employ more people and to make a knife. Am I right? Uh, sorry, just enough. So employing more people over? Mechanizing. Yes. Adapting machinery. Sure. Isn't, that, isn't that more costly for you as a business and is it sustainable? And, and 
And in the long run, they're going to be able to still employ more people in, in the community of Kenya, maybe across East Africa. Because I, I get the feeling, and you correct me if I'm wrong, because you know that this is better than me. I get the feeling that in the long run, and in the medium and long run, probably won't be as sustainable to, 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 to employ more people. And I'm worried on our behalf as, as the young people, we're trying, we're trying to feed uh, our human resources into your business, that probably won't have the opportunities, um, won't have the opportunities uh, absolutely, very good question. Uh, this is a dilemma that uh, I'm sure many people in this room, room face, right? Automization brings in a lot of efficiency, it brings in a lot of cost reduction in certain contexts. What we're doing is we're actually, we're actually turning the tables on this situation and saying to ourselves, what do we need to do to maintain the workforce that we have across the world? Well, we've, we've, we've grown our, our capacities and our volumes very effectively across the sectors we operate in. This has given us uh, added advantages of economies of scale, uh, bulk buying, uh, etc. However, what you, your point is absolutely valid and, and it's very difficult to get away from it. What, what we are trying to avoid in the future, as, 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 as you already said, we, we need to become more efficient, we need to become more competitive, as a marketplace we become more competitive. We're, we're trying to make sure that we absorb the people we have by growing our businesses and making sure we try not to make any redundancy. Whether you ask me right, whether our rate of employment will, will, will carry on to be as rapid as it is right now is a question mark. But we have uh, also a very aggressive strategy to roll out across various African countries, which will, I think, you know, offset some mechanization that we may do. It's a very valid point. I, I, I agree, and it's something that we've been discussing very strongly at board level as well. I hope that answers answers a little bit of your question. We'd like to conclude with one question from myself.